Fine TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. And I, it wasn't my fault for last week. I must play. I'm going to put explain. it out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming in with this week's Power Book 2 Ghost Expeding Expectations. Okay, now I have egg on my face. I can eat crow this week because it was my idea to do 10 minute recaps on last week. And let me explain real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Every season that we do power, you have a whole group of people that are like, why are your reviews so long? Why are they 20 and 30 minutes long? Well, freaking it's an hour show. Right. Then why am I listening to what I just watched? I don't know. You type the skit in. But anywho, so we were like, okay, let's see if we can just change it up <laughs> a little bit and give the people what they've been asking for. And y'all was like, what the freak are y'all doing? <laughs> like, like, really, this this is not what we've come here for. We come here for the banter. We right. come here for the one-alls. We come here for the rabbit holes, too. Where are the rabbit holes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, God darn it, this week, rabbit holes gonna be here. So we're gonna get right into this recap. And we're gonna give it to y'all. Listen, and I don't wanna hear nobody complaining about how lengthy it is. Yeah. None of it. Nah, we love y'all, though. Yeah, we love y'all. It was yeah. all, it was good intent. But it was very much good intent. Yeah, it was a good intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were trying to trying to just get it to you quick and let you go on about your Sunday. Yeah. But y'all want to uh, be But we back to that. Y'all want to be here with us for a while? Here we go. <laughs> that said, in this week's episode, we come in and we see Tasha in the, I guess, the interrogation room waiting on Davis McLean to come. She looked like she real nervous, like, where in the heck is this nigga at? Because you know, black people, we ain't never on time. We always on CCB time. And then, of course, while she's in there, old girl from last week that was walking her to herself was back there kiki and ha-ha, like, okay, now where's your lawyer at? What the hell's going on? She think everything is freaking funny. So Davis finally shows up, but she brings another person, which was Paula, her investigator. Mm. I mean, his investigator. Yeah. So the first thing Tasha was like, can I afford her? He said, you can't afford me. <laughs> he was like, you can't even afford me. Matter of fact, when is the next time I'm going to receive a payment? I said, that and I was like, uh, well, Davis, technically, she didn't hire you. Tariq was the one who hired you. <laughs> so ask him to run you your money. But what was kind of confusing was she was like, ain't Stern taking, Simon Stern taking care of you? And but I was so but I was like, confused what, how, Yeah, I was like, how did Simon get mixed up? with that part because the only part that we know that Simon was get him in was get him in school he get truth we all good yes I didn't understand so I don't know why they're building something with yeah that. I don't know Trust. why she throw that out there but anyway so Davis is upset because Tasha didn't tell him the full story because we see Tasha been lying all through last um, episode and she's still nerves. lying so he was like okay so why didn't you tell me the history that you and Tommy had with, with the fans? fans? Because you gonna tell me, I thought that this was a domestic dispute and this was from a long-term friend helping you out, but only come to find out y'all involved with the goddamn fans. So you got me in too deep. Yeah, you got me in real deep. So they begin to question her to find out what's going on. So Tasha goes and say Tommy and Ghost was this drug dealing kingpin Merlin motherfuckers. What kind of? <laughs> <laughs> so still True. throwing Tommy up underneath the bus. Now I have a problem with that. I have a real problem. With because that. Tommy has always been about family and about loyalty. And for you to get in there and throw him under the bus. Once again, bad enough that you did it in court. That was even worse. Yeah. And then now you are, you know, in front of the lawyer, and you still the second time throwing him underneath the bus. And did she forget that Tommy spared her life? Yes. At the blink yep. of him pulling the trigger. Yep. Like literally, because of family, he yep. couldn't kill you. So, <laughs> with her saying that, that Tommy. So they asked the perfect question. Well, Paula asked the question was like, okay, so if Tommy Egan comes, can he collaborate this story? In other words, if he sits on the stand, is he going to say that you said for him to, to, murder, to, your to murder your husband? And of course, she fidgety and everything. And I'm like, Tasha, you really need, at this point, you really need to stop lying. Yeah. You need to tell we'll come them. Come up with a solid answer. A, 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 a good lie. Yeah, a good lie. Stick yeah. with it. Because <laughs> which, right now, it's just all over the which, place. Which, which, which she can't. And so the investigator was like, um, so you didn't know anything 
that your husband had going on. That was millions of dollars of narcotics coming through y'all. Yeah, that was a lot of money. Millions of dollars. And her name was on a lot of stuff. Her name was on the articles of incorporation. Your name was on the liquor license. So, and your name was on some accounting documents. So, so how mean, would you not know? Yeah. So you mean to tell me you didn't help him clean any money? At right. All. Right. So when she started asking those questions, she was like, I didn't help Tommy or Ghost clean any money. I was yeah. like, you better yeah. make that. He said, let me let me reframe that. <laughs> I said, yeah, ask the question right, because she is about to buck her life up. Yes. So, so McLean asked her, say, okay, so was you calling in the shots in the organization? You know, was you moving any money? Like, was you cleaning any money? You know, what was your involvement? And she's still denying that she was not involved. She didn't know anything about what was going on, which is a clear lie. You got to come up. You got that much money coming to your household, and you don't know where the I hell swear. it's coming from? Now, I know Ghost had truth, but I don't think truth was making that kind of paper. It was making paper, it was but making like paper. you said, in a household, you know what's coming and what's going. All of a sudden, we getting some racks in here that's not being accounted for. Yeah. Where they coming from? Exactly. So you you know. You know what some skits going on. Yeah. So And it works that way when the money goes out, too. So I'm like, Tasha, you sitting up in jail. You got plenty of time to think about a better story than what you coming up with now. She is actually getting on my nerves. Right. Leave her in there. So now we have old Tariq and um, Zeke. So Tariq was like, Zeke, how in the world you got all this fly A gear? I thought college ball players didn't make no money. Oh, Zeke was like, shoot, this is my own Monet. She take care of all this so I can focus on basketball. I have a problem. Yeah. I have a problem with that. The problem I have with is that you're incentivizing him to be stupid. You're paying for his college. You paying for his gear. You paying for his sneakers. And you paying anyway, you ain't paying, but you it's, got a tutor. Set up. You got a tutor doing it so that he can play ball. So I'm what I'm trying to figure out with him and his Aunt Monet is she trying to get out the game. Cause it seems like she inherited this from her husband, Lorenzo, that's currently mm -hmm. locked up. So it looked like she maybe didn't want to do the business and maybe she looking at Zeke as an escape plan. Like if he do good at basketball, he make it to the NBA, we can make millions so we can still freaking have drug money the legal way. Yeah. I can still have this lifestyle. Yeah. But legit. Exactly. Legit. So yeah, so I don't so so Tariq was like, here's your mobile dick paper. Make sure you read it, <laughs> bro. Because they ask you questions. <laughs> yeah. She likes to ask questions, and you're going to blow us up if you don't know the answers. And then Tariq said, I need to do one more thing. Ask your aunt, can I come over dinner tonight? Because this dog food sucks. Yeah, I'm sick I knew right there today. I said, oh, he up to something. I said, either he wants to go see that girl, yeah. or it's something else that he wants to know about that household. Exactly. So we see Tariq show up to Chronicle Chron Studies again late, and then come to find out that he didn't read fully read the second book. So I'm like, come they on. Go through books real fast in that class. Yeah, so I'm like, come God. on, Tariq. But I, I understand the pressure that Tariq is under. Because I know, I don't know if I can handle it. That my dad is dead. No, no, no. You killed your dad. Yeah, yeah. You killed your daddy. Now you running all around here trying to sell drills to get up paper to get your mama out of jail. For something that you did. And now you jumping in Chronicle Studies that is a really hard course to go through so you can get out of college maybe a year or two earlier so you, so you can get your, your inheritance. And you're still not keeping up with that. So you're still not proving yourself. So I I, I don't know. I got to give it to um, Tariq, though. I didn't think that Tariq could actually carry on a series by himself. I was just great to see it. Yep. I am not disappointed. I yeah. really am enjoying how they are developing his character. Yeah. Where he is turning into his father. He is. Like, he is so strategic. Even when he doesn't know what he's doing, the next step is a calculated move. Yeah. And the next step is thought out. And I'm like, that God darn Tariq. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to ask ourselves this question, and I'm going to ask y'all this, and this is for us too, is that we love ghosts. The character Ghost. That, that's what kept us here. Ghost and time. We like the original Ghost. The yeah. Ghost that died, but, but, yeah. he could die. Yeah, that original Ghost. Yeah, you're yeah. right. But do we want another Ghost? No, we don't. Do we? Some of y'all may would. I, I would like another Ghost, but different. 
don't don't follow the same pattern of the old ghost. Let it be maybe a, a more smarter ghost because the, the other ghosts were very smart. So could Tariq be smarter? And I'm I, I'm gonna talk about that some more in a minute. I, I'm gonna tell you why why I, why I said that. All right, because I'm listening. Yeah. So old girl was the one in Chronicle Studies that pretty much blow Tariq's spot up that he didn't read the book because the professor. Quay from um daughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so because he was asking him what he thought about the book. The book was called Great Expectations, mm -hmm. and so he was like, you know, I like the book. You know, it was. Uh, I can't remember all that he, what they said about the book. He, he said he, enough that made you think that he read the book. Yeah. And then the old girl just blew up the spot. Well, like, was like, uh, but the ending. Yeah. And he and like, he paused and the <laughs> professor was like, here we go again. You you didn't finish the book. Second time in a row, Tariq. Yeah. Come on down, Tariq. We, we, we got we got to get it together, bro. But now, hold on. Let's, before we even go further than that, what was up with the, with the hood chick in the class? It was so misplaced, so out of place. Yeah, I didn't understand I mean, that either. Cussing yeah. like a sailor, like, and I know that this does happen in college. Not to that level, like real talk. Your professors will put you out. I mean, going on and on and just. It was, it was almost like they just threw that part. Yeah, in there. I was like, and, well, who did y'all owe money to that y'all had to just place her in here? Because that made no sense to me. But then again, we know that power sometimes will throw a character in there and be like, "What the hell is that?" And then and like few come back later. a few episodes later, we see her doing something else. I, I don't know. So maybe she got got more parts. I, but it was I wasn't gonna talk about it because I. It, it bothered the heck out of me because I was trying to make sense of it. I, I like, didn't understand. And for her to be, have such a boastful scene, I was like, "Yeah, why? Like, it made no sense. So, while Tariq was in class, he get a text from, from Davis like, we need to meet. <laughs> His poor phone, man. I hope he's still, <laughs> yeah. I hope he had a, charger, a portable charger. So, Davis was telling Tariq, say, hey, look. Saxon now wants to pin the queen status, uh, kingpin statue on your mama. So we need to come up with something good to convince the jury that your father was violent and dangerous. So what I'm going to need you to do is that at that funeral of mine, huh. I need you to blow your dad up. I was like, Dang, and Tariq rough. was like, why he's in the ground? And I was like, okay. That kind of let me in on that. Even though Tariq killed his father, he still had some kind of feelings for his father. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's like, because at first, Tariq was so cold about ghosts in the last season. I mean, I mean, he killed his daddy. I mean, he killed him. And now you got something easier to do to get up there and just talk skit about him. And you, you hesitant. But you wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger. So, I, yeah. You, you want to add to that? No. Yeah, so he was like, Davis was like, so you have to do it because it's either your father's legacy hmm. or your mama's life. Grow some balls. I was like, dang, that is a <laughs> tough spot. <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah. That is a rough spot to be in. Yeah. Because like, have you ever spoke at a funeral? Speaking at, of funerals, hard. It's hard. It's horrible. It's hard because people are looking at you crazy. They, want to know they crying. Gonna they all like this, wondering what you're going to say. And they want you to make them feel better. Yep. But if you're up there speaking, you're usually someone that's close to the decedent anyway. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it, it's such a <laughs> tough place to be in. And he's such a young child. Yeah. He's, he's a young man, but he's still a child. Yeah. Being put in a position like that. But he put himself there. So it's not like we want to... I 100% feel sorry for him. He did it to himself. Yeah, he did. But it's like, dang, you you are literally holding the family. Like, you're carrying the family right now. Yep. Like, if your mom stays in prison, what's happening to your grandma? Yeah. What's happening to your little sister? All yeah. of that is, has to be taken into consideration with every move. Yep. That's something. So right. But did you see that when you pulled the trigger, though? Nah, you don't never see. Hindsight yeah. is 2020. You don't it never sure see all is. that. You don't see the bigger picture. So now our boy Brayden runs into Dorit. Uh, we remember him from Brayden is a mess. <laughs> yeah, so we remember him from Cho. You remember he was helping Tariq run them pills through Cho. So Brayden knows something is up. He was like, hey, whatever your father's you fearing them all, but you got something going on. And whatever it is, I want in. Because, you know, we was running the game at Cho. We was doing a thing. You know, we was making <laughs> that bread at Cho. I want in. 
And Tariq was like, I ain't, I ain't got nothing going on. I ain't got going on. He but said, yeah, whatever. But Brayden know that was bullshit. Mm -hmm. So Brayden was like, hey, look, my brother is having a freaking uh, frat party tonight. We need to roll on up in there. He a dickhead, but I'm going to go. Tariq was like, he's such a dick. Why are you going? He was like, for the pussy. What you think? I mean, what you... <laughs> if I try to get demonetized for you saying, <laughs> It's, 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 it's normal. So, he gets a text from from Simon Stern while he's talking to uh, Braden that Simon wants to meet him. And then Zeke texts him and says, hey, Audrey Marnay said, it's cool for you to come over for dinner. He so, got a lot going on, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, a lot. He has more text messages than a CEO. Yeah, he do. <laughs> so, before we get into uh, Monet's scene, let's, let's talk about him going to talk to Simon. So, he went to go talk to Simon. And Simon, I, I, I can't believe that I'm saying this. I know. But Simon actually gave him some really good advice. Because Simon said, hey, Davis McLean gave me a call. Because, well, no, Tariq told him, said, Davis McLean wants me to blow my father up at the funeral tomorrow. And he was like, yeah, I know. I got that tone from him when he called me. So I'm still trying to figure out Stern and yeah. Davis's connection. You know, or maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. I'm just going to keep watching. <laughs> uh, so Stern was like, I don't think that's a good idea for you to blow your father up because we got a political thing going on here. We need to preserve his legacy because if you get in there and you blow him up, things ain't going to look good for you. This is how it's going to play out. I'm going to be good <laughs> because if you put him out there and he get investigated, in other words, the money that you're supposed to be getting an inheritance, that's going to go away because they're going to seize all that stuff if they find out what your father really, really exactly. did. So the best interest for you is to talk good about him so that y'all can get this paper. That's what pretty much what Simon was saying because either way, he going to be good. Yeah, Simon was like, if it blows up, I'm still good. I can detach from this. Yeah. But you, that's your future. Yeah. Stop your money flow if you want to trying to play this game. Yep. He was like, I know what you're trying to do with your mom. But at this point, he said, I want you to be different from your father. Yes. Your father always did things for the family, for the family. Mm -hmm. And that was one thing I tried to get him to do was do things for yourself. Yep. And he was like, if you do this for the family, you're going to cut yourself off yeah. from any inheritance that these businesses could ever bring you. I said, yeah, dang. I said, Simon yeah, Stone, yeah, he you right. big head motherfucker. But, but even though he gave him good advice, it was for himself. It was self yeah, it was beneficial for himself because really, truly, he don't want to lose truth. <laughs> nah, he don't want to lose truth. I can tell you that right now. He really don't want to lose truth. So now we see that Monet is freaking sleeping with the police. I was done. I was like, because <laughs> when she was in the bed with him, I was like, like this doesn't look compatible. It, yeah, it doesn't. At yeah. all. Yeah. But I was like, maybe he got that good D. I mean, you know, sometimes you could just be like, ah, <laughs> you know. But his name is Officer, I think it's Ramirez. I think it said Danilo Ramirez. It doesn't Ramirez. matter. It doesn't matter. Because he's going he gonna to be, well, I can't say he's going to be around for a while either. But <laughs> in other words, he catching feelings. He was like, don't we got a connection? And she was like, I ain't got no time for connections. Matter of fact, my husband's name, Lorenzo, actually clears a lot of weight in these streets. That's how I'm staying protected. And I was like, ooh. And she was like, you can't do that for me. Yeah, but what made me think, because I was like, how bad is she in the streets that she still needs to use Lorenzo's name to protect herself? I don't think it's necessarily that she's bad in the streets. Anything that she does in the, street, in the streets, she pretty much has immunity. Because her her husband was that he was that motherfucker. No, what I was what I was taking it as is that if she gets involved fully with this dude and makes it public, and people see it, that she becomes an open target in the streets. In yeah. other words, people are not gonna be afraid of her anymore because it's gonna look like she moved on from her husband exactly. to this dude. Just think about it this, this way: if we were in a mob family. And you were the head of the organization and you mm -hmm. went away and you went to prison. Nobody's really going to buck with me because they know that your interest is to make sure that 
this is protected at yeah. all costs. Regardless of where you are physically, yeah. you got hitters that's making sure that your household is surrounded and protected. Right. But if I move on to somebody else, they already know that that protection has been lifted off mm. of you mm -hmm. because you have moved on to somebody else. You still that motherfucker. And they might not mess with the kids. They may not mess with the, with your parents. But me right here, I'm not going to be protected like I was. Hmm. Because I disconnected from the fam. Gotcha. So huh. I lifted my own umbrella of safety. So that's what she's saying I, to I him get, is, I will buck you. And I will buck you good. But we ain't going public. But we're not going public. And not even these kids can know. Because at the end of the day, and you a cop. For real. Hmm. Like, really? How does that even look in the streets? She was like, no, no, no. Yeah. And you can't protect me like he can. Like, his name carries that's, weight. That's a good point about, yeah, about him being a police officer. Yeah. So which, which clearly, well, he knows what she do. I mean. Yeah, but I don't so, trust him either. Something yeah. about him just does not sit but I guess, him. But I guess in my head is that I, I'm i waiting to see that bad B from Mary J. And I really haven't seen that full bad B yet. Well... Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting on because everything yeah. <laughs> everything that's happening right now she just she calling the shots and getting other people to She's do it. She's grandfathered in. Yeah, so yeah, that's I guess that's what I'm waiting on. But that's a powerful bad bit where you don't have to be that bit to still run skit and people respect you hmm. because of what you're connected to. Right. So I guess I guess as we continue to do this thing, we'll find out if her family respects her because she's the auntie. Or because she's that bad B. Or is it because of what she's providing? Good point. It's a lot. So we see um, John Mock, Sax, and I can't think of the other dude. And then we see Davis and Paula. The two scenes is going back and forth. Because they both trying to decide on this freaking case with Tasha. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing of all they said. But this was the plan. So John Mock and them was saying what they want to do is that they want to make this kingpin stat statue stick on Tasha. And the way they're going to do it is because she got up in court and said she told Tommy to kill her husband, hmm. which means that's proof that she, she was the head of the organization because she was calling the shots. Now, Davis and Davis said what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get the freaking case dropped. Hmm. And I have a problem with that, too, and I'm going to let you know why. I didn't have a problem with that. I, I knew you, it wasn't going to work. I'm going to tell you the problem I had with it, though. Because, she, uh, well, they was like, we need to prove that Sax has a motive for what he did in court. And that way we can get the judge to drop the case before we even go to trial. I'm like, that's a good plan, per se, but you a freaking half a million dollar lawyer. And that's the best Don't do that. plan Don't that, do that. that you can come up with. Don't do that. I could have came, came up with that for as a regular lawyer making $100, $200 an hour, maybe. But Wait, what'd you, a half a million dollars to get into the gate and we're just going to go in and make the judge just drop the case. First of all, put some respect on Davis McLean's name. Put some respect on Method Man. He <laughs> need to show me something that I can respect. <laughs> Man, I like meth and everything. He my dog. Oh, me too. But that plan was not worth the money. But I know he haven't got a half a mil. He already got 50 G's and whatever else tricked and paid him. But he was it just 50? Yeah. But I think he paid us. I, I think it was 50 they, that he are. Uh, I thought it was more than for some reason. But we saw they got it in. Last week. We saw he they got in there with the judge, and she they went back. They went back and forth, back and forth, and of course it did not work. Once again, Sax got his way. The judge pissed me off because when um, what's the chick name that we don't like from last year? But uh, last season. Who Blanca? Blanca. Yeah, Blanca. When Blanca came in there, she wasn't answering the questions with just the simple yes and no. She was blowing Sax spot up in front of the judge. The judge knew that Sax was on some bull mm -hmm. and that he was trying to pull things together to make this thing stick. But she would not drop the charges. Nope. And she told me some, oh, I will hear what Blanca has to say, but it's going to have to be on the witness stand. I was like, because of the way that she already answered the freaking 
questions, you already know it's some bull. It's bull, bull. Yep. So this is what the justice system does. Yep. Even when they know it's some bull, they take you through and whole bunch of money being spent. Yep, that's what I was saying. Whole bunch yep. of people's time being spent. And it's a whole high profile with... case. Exactly. Yep. Yep, yep. So here's Sack's brilliant idea is that he gonna bring in Officer uh, Ramirez, Ramirez as the lead investigator on the case. <laughs> because he has a hard on for Davis. Exactly. So, yeah. So, at first, he wasn't going to do it until Davis' name came up about the Perez case. I guess we're going to figure out what the Perez case we is. We probably know what it is, but Kyle moves so like this. Yeah. Sometimes you're forgetting the cases and then be like, oh, that case. Yeah. So, yeah. So, he got convinced um, with that. Then we saw Tariq um, was meeting with uh, Professor Milgram. Um, the lady because she found out that he didn't finish the book again and so she was talking to Rick that we need to provide you a safe place so you can express your feelings because black men don't have an opportunity to process their feelings with, I agree with that. which is which is so true that is so true it, and, 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 it's, and it's sad that that we don't have that place to do that I'm glad that they brought that up yeah. Although they didn't create a solution for it. Yeah. I do, I do agree with that, that that's something that needs to be discussed. Certainly in a time like this. Yeah. A pandemic where you have everybody just kind of confined to their own spaces. Yeah. And if you like us, we've been fortunate enough to be able to work from home. We don't really leave the house too much. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if you had someone that was dealing with some really heavy skit and you had no outlet right. to speak to anybody. Like, thank God for like Zoom and... We don't have some of the Zoom calls. I'm yeah. sick of Zoom right now. Like, I've, I even pay for Zoom at this point because yeah, <laughs> because we speak to so many people on Zoom and for so long a duration of time. But, yeah. Yeah. That was an awesome plug that they, but she, her execution was horrible. Right. So, that's another thing that we could speak about. You may have great intentions to help someone. If your execution isn't, you can make things worse. Exactly. Way worse. Way worse. So... After that conversation that she had with Tariq, she goes over to uh, Professor Reynolds, Jabari Reynolds, <laughs> and she started expressing I'm con that's her concern with Tariq, and he was like, I am too. You said that he was supposed to be so motivated, but he ain't, his, he ain't we on the second book, he ain't doing nothing. Now, come to find out that we already knew from, from last week that they had, they had been in a relationship, but it seemed like... There was some weird skit going on in their relationship. So as they was arguing about Tariq, she was like, so you decided to take my personal business <laughs> and put it in a novel. I said, whoa. So whoa. my mind started spinning like, what the hell was going on in y'all's relationship? That was interesting enough. That you put it in a book. In a book to the point where it was clear that it was her. And you pissed about it. Yeah. But going further... It, it has to have something to do with the fact that she's a sex addict. Must be. So was it that she was just like on some stalkerish stuff with him? I don't I, know. I, I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah. So I guess I guess maybe as we continue to go on. But she proceeds to tell him what she's planning on doing for Tariq is having a visual at the quad. Having a who? A visual. 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 At the quad, and he was, and she was, he was like, "That's a bad idea." Horrible idea. I said, "That's horrible," because the last thing you want to happen is, uh, and I know when I lost my father, I would not want no public visual like that, because and not to be ambushed by one. Because we saw it was very weird. Yeah. Because the way they got to Rick, I can't. Um, Queen Latifah's daughter was the one to convince him to show up. So he showed up, and when he came, they were taking pictures with their camera phones and all. And I was like, how in the world y'all expect for him to stay when you're going to act like a reporter when he show up with all the cameras and skit? Yeah, it was, it was weird. It was weird. And we, I, I, yeah, I, I knew it wasn't going to work. And you have a whole bunch of people that this boy just met. Yeah. So it's not a support system for him. Good intentions, horrible execution. Like I said, you just made it worse. Yes. I thought he was just going to break down and start crying right there. So. Yeah. Is this where we actually gonna get some emotion out of Tariq? Nah. Yeah. Him and Zeke was like, let's get up out of here. Let's go to the party. So Tariq ended up over at uh, Monet's for dinner. So they was having dinner. 
Uh, she offered to reach some some something to drink. He was like, "That's okay." But Zeke was like, "Hey, hook me up. I ain't got no game this week." <laughs> so there was a, a loud knock at the door, and I was like, I said, "Here it is." About to die. I said, "It felt like somebody was gonna die." And then when Kane went to the door, I was like, "Cause they gonna kill Kane off this quick?" Yeah. But it was Uncle Frank, and Uncle Frank came in, and Monet was like. I thought you had another couple of years. How you got out? He said, you know, you yeah. know. But he didn't really answer the question. He laughed it off and, said, hmm. and da da da. And he go around and say, hey, Zeke. Hey, what you call it? Hey, what you call it? Hey, Diana, you know, you done filled out. I was That's like, it. you going to walk up in the house and you going to say that? About, about your niece? Yeah. That's some weird pedophilish mess. Yeah. Ancestral mess. No, I was like, they should have whooped your egg right there for even All making that boys. freaking statement. You filled out? What? So I'm trying to figure out what Uncle Frank was in the organization for them to let him get away with that. Because that wouldn't have flew in my family. You walked At up in there and said some skit like that? At all. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. So he proceeds to tell her that, hey, Lorenzo told me to come over here. He promised me that you would hook me up because you about family. He was, she was like, no, Lorenzo didn't promise you nothing because he would have gave me a heads up before you even got here. So you hear you telling and me this is what he said? She said, matter of fact, dinner's over. Diana, clear the dishes. <laughs> um, Zeke, you staying here tonight because you drunk. Kane, you taking Tariq back to the dome. And uh, I can't think of the other guy's name. Uh, you take, care you take him and talk to him. But I was like, Zeke is drunk, but you got Kane taking him back to the school. So Zeke could have rode with... Yeah, Damn, yeah, so. that's what I was like. But so maybe she just didn't want him going to the college drunk. I, but I he wasn't know. drunk. He had just drank. So Kane and them was rolling, and so Kane decided that he wants to try to scare Tariq. Just like he pulled over, was like, you know what? I don't trust you. In some of the words, I don't trust you. You hot. Um, and what you see said, in my household stays, stays in, in my, my house. household. Tariq was like, dude, this ain't even what this yeah. is. Yeah. Because if you talking about like your Uncle Frank, the snitch. He was a like, hoe. Oh, you was talking about my family. He was talking about like, family like that. He, he said, said he snitch. He, he said, think about it. Yeah. And when he read him down, he was like, it takes this and now. This, mm-hmm. this, parole hearings. Yep. How do you think he got out? He said, your daddy didn't even have forewarning? Yep. He didn't even warn Monet about it before he came. He just showed up all willy-nilly. So he was made, like, yeah. dang, you right. My uncle is a snitch. Yep. <laughs> which we starting to see here. How Tariq is becoming more and more like Ghost because Ghost would have saw that. Mm-hmm. So my thing was, I was like, did Monet them not see that? So obviously Kane didn't see it. Yeah. So so uh, we see the scene where Monet was uh, talking to Diane. Uh, uh, what's her name? Diane. Diane or Diane? Diane, Diane. Or Diane one of one of with by next episode we'll figure it out. So they was talking about we need to figure out how Frank got out. So he called your name and said that stuff, which means you got power over him. So I'm going. Like, what the hell are yeah. you asking this girl to do? Yeah. So he was, because she was like, whatever you got to do to get the information. I said, wait, wait, wait. And wait, I was wait, like, wait, so wait, you wait. saying you want her to go as far as sleeping with him to find out it, why he got out? It, yeah. So, yeah. When you say some mess like that, I'm like, ho, 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 we, we going too far. Yeah. See? Then after that, she went in there and woke Zeke up and told him, I need you to find out everything you need that, that you can find out on Tariq. Because now her wheels are turning because she was like, why was he interested in being over here? Zeke, did he ask to come over here or did you invite him? Yeah. And Zeke was like, oh, he asked to come over here. So now she's trying to like, huh, if he said that he was a snitch and he really was a snitch, but he's interested in being over here in this house, what what's the connection? What, where is he here? Like, who is he yeah. or who sent you? Like, yeah. what's going on in this house? So, we finally get to Ghost's funeral. <laughs> finally. <laughs> but it's a whole lot that been happen before we get Ghost in the ground. A lot. A lot. Only in TV land. For well, real. Are we going to speak about what they did to Frank? Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to speak about okay. what they what they did to Frank. Because I didn't I didn't want that to go back. But, but since you brought up, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> so Frank was in this but at this bar. It seemed that nobody was present. And he was drinking it some was true. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it seemed like Ghost was the only person that truth all of the time. So we saw Kane come in and he creeping in, he locked the door. He came in and bust him upside the head. 
but I was kind of confused at first until I had to put the pieces together because I was like, I thought that Monet wanted Diane to talk to Frank to find out how he got out. Now we got Kane coming in to take him out. So Kane knocked him upside of the head, drug him in the back with his brother, and shoot him, cut him up, and put him in some beer kegs and put him in the back of the truck. But, come to find out, as I put all the pieces together, when Monet was talking to Diane, and when Kane came in, when they was talking about, about Frank, uh, about being Frank being a snitch, Monet told uh, Diane them that uh, Kane was going to take care of it. So that's why he went and killed Frank. But I was like, I, I thought Diane was going to find out some information. So I don't see Maybe she got maybe, there. Maybe, maybe she did or maybe she didn't. But but anyway, but we had Ghost Funeral. We see. But, hold on. Go ahead. Who was helping Kane, the brother, over there at the bar? Because once they got those bodies out there in the steel drums, yeah. somebody closed cell. They did, yeah. Who was that? Yeah. Because it wasn't the brother because he was already in the truck, right? Yeah, he was in the truck. I didn't watch it two, three times, but I was like, who the hell is that? <laughs> so now we got this other person that'll sit there to witness old Frank getting cut. I mean, they don't cut the man leg off. Cut him right up. Cut it. Lord have mercy. He had a, <laughs> by now, he had a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> don't I cry. <laughs> So at Ghost Funeral, we see old Councilman uh, Tate is present. I said, really? We, we got to deal with him again. <laughs> Uncle Gabe came up. I forgot all about Uncle Gabe. I did too. Uncle Gabe told Tariq, you just like your daddy. Tariq's like, I don't even look like him. It's like, he ain't talking about looks. He talking about the way that y'all act and the way y'all mm, move. Demeanors. Yeah. And, you know, he go to tell Tariq that, you know, we uh, didn't want to lose your father to the streets. And, you know, it seemed like he was trying to turn himself around. Um, so that you can have a better life and da da da, yada da. So then we see the police officer pull up with Tasha, and Tasha was decked out in all that black because I actually thought that she was gonna get out that car with shackles on her ankles on her feet, and she still was being in an orange uniform. That's how I thought. I she knew was. she wasn't gonna be in the orange, but I was looking for the shackles. I said, "Oh, she's pretty free right now." Like every every funeral I seen where they had to bring in a prisoner, hmm. they are shackled. And it's an embarrassment. Well, they shocked her when she got out that car. Cause I was still confused by something. I don't know if you're going <clears> to <throat> speak on it. That up until the time they shackled her, well, handcuffed her, Davis was like, she can do the eulogy. But once she was shackled, he said she can no longer do the eulogy. Yeah. Like, I don't know the laws of imprisonment, but is that like something in the law where I, you I, can't... I, do things like that if you're shackled? I was taking Or was it, it a publicity thing? I think it was a publicity. I think because he wanted her to get up there and to, I guess, trash ghosts. And where she get up there with in shackles, trashing ghosts, ain't gonna look right. You can't, you trashing your husband, but you locked up for but killing your husband. I didn't know you locked up, so I didn't understand how. No, what I'm saying as far as publicity, you get up there talking this crap about ghosts. Gro gross. <laughs> gross. Talk <laughs> talking this crap about ghosts, but you locked up too. So it would have looked more better for her to be up there without no cuffs on because not everybody know that she is that, you know. I got you. But that, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just thinking this thing through. So they was like, we need to find some y'all. Saxton was like, y'all need to find somebody else to speak. Matter of fact, let Tate do it. I said, no, no, no. Tate no, said, no, I no, will no. be glad to do it. I was like, oh, no, don't let that Negro get up there. <laughs> but I knew that Tate was going to be nasty but nice and keep it cute. Because he wasn't going to blow up his own spot either. No. Nah. So I wasn't too worried about it. But I was like, don't you get your narrow A up there and say a word. Yeah, I didn't want him up there. Yeah. So Tariq said, I'll do it. And Tariq pulled it off. He did. He stayed very in the middle. You know, he's... His he left father, it open in Yeah, my father was complicated. Now, I didn't know who my father was. Matter of fact, I'm finding out more about my father now. I know more about my father now than when he was alive. That's and, real and, talk. And that's, that's, that's that deep. That is real talk. <laughs> Cause, I, mean, I mean, for real, for real. Every you, death. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who it is. You find out things that you didn't ever know. You exactly. find out you have cousins and brothers and sisters you ain't know about. Yep. <laughs> Be like, oh, 
Oh, okay. Who this person walking in behind the family? Oh, that's his mistress. But <laughs> but kind of goes to show that we know that Ghost was trying to make a future for his family, going out and doing what he was doing, trying to get out the drug game. But at the same time, we can see that he never taught Tariq who he was. You see what I'm saying? So Tariq had no idea. He couldn't get up there and speak intelligently about his father because he didn't know him. Yeah. He only knew what he witnessed. So you can be a provider and your kids cannot know you. That's that's crazy. Whoop. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. So we see uh, Diane comes over to uh, Tariq's dorm because she impressed that he knows so much about the game. Uh, so he proceeds to ask her, say, hey, I need a favor. Um, do you talk to your dad? Because I need your dad to get something to my mom. And they didn't. Did she say what it was? I don't. I don't remember. I know she talked her. about. Yeah, yeah. He, she did. She, um, he did tell her that. She, um, oh yeah. The he wanted to get the morning pill. after pill, cause what the morning after pill, mom, we saw in the, uh, further we, back. We, we fought further back in the episode when old God was talking to old girl, which we don't know what what her part gonna fit but in. She that was in. busting the door but open she, for somebody. Yeah, I need a morning after pill. She's like, what what dangling you in here riding that you need a morning after pill? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's, it had to be one of the gods. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And this so, happens for real. So I need you. What she said? I need you get it in fit, fifty two hours or yeah. something like that. I was like, what thought, about forty eight? Yeah, I thought it was twenty four to forty eight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but but anyway, so we see uh, after that we saw Tasha coming back to the cell. And she sit on the bed and she feels the book. She pulls the book out. The, and the book is the the book that Tariq's reading at school. Yeah. You toy your school book out, man? I said, really, Tariq? Um, but anyway, so it has a burner phone and we see the morning after pill. So first thing she do, she called Tariq, was like, I'm impressed at what you did today, but I don't need you out in these streets getting into trouble. I'm like, come on, Tasha. He's uh -huh. supposed to be helping you get out of jail. He's your child. Yeah, I mean, you know <laughs> he's not going to be on the up and up and straight and straight. You know, he's going to do what he got to do to try, yeah. to try to get you out of jail. So Tariq tells Tasha, you mama one ghost used to tell us that every drug dealer either, in, either ends up in jail or in prison. But guess what? I'd have found another way. You did? Now, I'm trying to figure out uh, what he meant by that because the first thing made me think of, because you remember when they went at the frat party, you remember the Kevin's police came and they was going to arrest the brother because the brother punched them. Assaulted a police officer. Yeah, I was like, only they and can do lived. that. Yeah, only they can do that. Yeah. But that's a whole And nother. he was released yeah. unharmed. Yeah. No, he was released no knee on the neck. Right, because he was a Weston, you know. And his brother Braden was the one that got him out of that. And you saw Tariq looking like, hmm, yeah, they so got he, that he, kind of power. Uh -huh. He gonna use all that. And so I'm trying stage. to figure out, you know, Tariq, is he gonna use those brothers to, yeah. I think that's gonna have something and to do the with brother, that. Well, the one brother's gonna be all here for it. He yeah. ready. Yeah. So yeah, we don't know where power is going, but I'm enjoying <clears throat> it. I yeah. thought that it was gonna annoy me. Yeah. And the 10 minute, 10 minute quick cast would actually help with that. But I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So I don't actually mind sitting down here talking about it. Like processing <laughs> it all. And then we saw some comments where they were like, Matt that um, Mary J. Blige is um, acting is horrible. I don't mind it. I really don't mm. mind it at all. It, it goes with the character that they're playing. Yeah. And real talk, the character that Mary J. Blige is playing, that's kind of her demeanor anyway. Like she's real like even kill. Yeah, she is. You know, so. And I like it. Yeah. I like it. And so, in closing, the episode ended where Monet and the police officer, he comes back over there bringing the gift and, some, and the snitch paperwork. She was like, what the hell am I going to do with this now? It's too late. Matter of fact, you should have told me that before he got here, player. And, he's and Frank is missing. She was looking like, oh, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, he was like, you know, what can I do to make it up to you? And she was like, find out everything you can from me on this Tariq kid. But here's the, the thing. went off. But here's the thing. He wasn't supposed to come to the house unannounced. So she was like, you need to hurry up and get up out of here before Kane comes and sees right. you. Kane already seen you, dude. Right. That's why I said I don't trust old cop. But I don't know if old cop going to be around for a very long time. Because Kane is the black version uh, of Tommy. Yes. And I was, and I was, I told, uh, I told Lynette, I said, are we stacking up like the old power where this police officer to Monet is like Angela was to Ghost? Hmm. Is that gonna be 
the okay. downfall of Monet with this police officer. Well, we saw what happened to her too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla! Holla.